up, Southside Church? How you doing today? It's such a good day to be in church with you guys here. Hey, we're gonna sing a couple songs. Why don't you stand up and join along? I've heard of wonders, ancient mysteries. The things of heaven my eyes have never seen here in this moment. May your will be done in me. I've read the stories of faith and I believe. You're still restoring, redeeming everything here in this moment. May your will be done. of the Father to the place where I belong and Lord your love could I ever understand it there's something about your presence that leaves me warm I'll bring my burdens and insecurities Run to the throne room and fall down at your feet You won't waste a moment You've come to save
I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it Searching, my soul needs a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, oh. you saw my condition, had a plan from the start.
No point of reference You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life And as you speak In the vapor of your breath, when it is full. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every burning star, a signal fire. Every part is on. 
Take a seat. Hi, my name's Emily, and I got baptized October 10th, 2021. Why did you choose to get baptized? I chose to get baptized because I believed in Jesus, and when you believe in Jesus, you believe and you get baptized. Baptism really was um, a moment to solidify my faith, and it was that next step to having me feel like I'm truly committed and have invited Jesus into my life, and I'm ready to build that relationship. Oh, I was so nervous as well, so um, I would say, do your best to try and turn those nerves into excitement because once you are up there and you are ready to get into that water, you don't even think about the people that are around you. You're just so excited for that moment. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dave and I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Southside and it's an honor to be with you all today. Hey, if Southside is new for you, I wanna say a huge welcome here. It doesn't matter if you're watching online or in person, where you're at with faith, God, or life, we exist for you and we'd also love to connect with you. All you have to do is text the keyword hello to our phone number 604-670-3040. You'll get a link back, which is our digital connections card that will help us to get to know you and your experience with us and answer any questions you have today. We'll also send you a $5 Starbucks e-card as a welcome here gift from us to you. And we hope you enjoy the service today and feel right at home, but hopefully dressed a little more appropriately than you do at home. It was awesome to hear a little bit from Emily about her baptism journey. 
It's amazing that such a simple step can have such an incredible impact in solidifying your faith and growing your relationship with God. Baptism is simply an outward expression of your inner commitment to follow Jesus. It symbolizes that when you go down into the water, that you're leaving your old life behind, that the old is gone and the new has come. And as we're raised up out of the water, that we are raised to a new life through Jesus. So if you believe in Jesus and have not yet been baptized, then this is your next step too. You don't have to have it all together. Jesus didn't say, clean up your life and then be baptized. He said it was simple, believe and be baptized. So whether you attend church online or in person, we've got a baptism service planned for you next Sunday, February 27th. We'd love it if you'd text DUNK to 604-670-3040 for more information or to sign up. We can't wait to cheer you on as you take this next step in your faith. On Wednesday, March 2nd, we are going to be beginning a journey called Lent. I was talking to a few people this week and they said that Lent was a little confusing. So I wanna share a quick story to maybe help clear it up. Before I proposed to my wife, which was a big moment in my life that I valued, I made changes in my life to prepare for that moment. I had changed how I spent my money, my finances, in order to afford to pay for her engagement ring. I wanted to present my best self, because let's be honest, I was aiming way out of my league, and I needed all the help I could get. I needed all the odds in my favor. So I lived on a bad salad, leafy greens, one can of tuna, and a third cup of cottage cheese, no dressing. And it worked, and she said yes, thank you very much, although the bad salad was not her idea. Now you might be thinking, what does your proposal have to do with Lent? Well, Easter is a huge part of Christ followers' life because it's the dedicated time and holiday that we celebrate the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the greatest moment in human history that was lived for us. And Lent is a 40-day Christian tradition that's designed steps we take to align us, to focus us, and prepare our hearts to walk into Easter with a posture of pure gratitude and honor towards God as we glorify Him and His love for us through Jesus. Over the 40 days, we typically make a commitment to fast or to give something up. Maybe it's a habit like watching TV, social media, or a food or a drink, or others prefer to take on a new practice, like reading the Bible, reading daily devotions, and spending more time in prayer. Those sacrifices and practices are designed to allow us to spend more time seeking and drawing closer to God and preparing for Easter. Here at Southside, we're also making a commitment to read a daily devotional from Wake Up, Walk On, written by our very own Corinne Manis, Monday through Saturdays until Easter. As a Christian, Lent isn't mandatory at all, but every year at Southside, we'd love to participate in it. This 40-day journey is an amazing opportunity for long-time and short-time Christians to see God work in your hearts and lives as we draw closer to Him preparing for Easter. So I'd encourage you to join us over the next couple weeks by A, asking God what He'd have us give up or add over these next 40 days, and B, text the word Lent to 604-670-3040 to see how you can either order a hard copy of Wake Up, Walk On, or receive a daily devotional to your phone as we journey together through Lent. As we prepare to give, I just wanna say what a great season we are in celebrating baptism and Easter in the upcoming weeks. They also illustrate one of the reasons why we give. I'm just so grateful that when we give, that when my family ties, that not only are we walking in obedience to the plan God has for us to bless us and our community, but we also are investing in funding things that are gonna end up in heaven, that we're getting an eternal return on investment. And how impactful is that? This year alone, we have already seen 79 people walk from darkness into the light of hope of Jesus by accepting Him into their hearts. That only happens when we, the church, give, and God then takes that and does immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Because church isn't funded by grants or corporations or governments, but by you and me, the church. It is God's plan, and one that's designed not only to change our city, but to change us. So I wanna encourage you to join us and take the step in your faith today to not only trust God, but to also invest in lives changed today, tomorrow, and eternity. You can simply join us as we all text GIVE to 604-670-3040, and you'll get a link back which lays out all the in-person and online ways that you can start giving today. All right, everyone, it's time for another impactful message in this series called Five. I can't wait to hear from God through Pastor Mike again today. So why don't you put your phones on Do Not Disturb, settle your mind, lean in, open your heart, and get ready to hear from God in the message today. We're in the last week of this six-week series called Five, and I just wanna 
thank everybody online and in person just for being here. It's actually pretty amazing. I've heard more feedback on this series than any series I've ever preached. And over and over again, I've heard people say, man, it's really helped. It's really inspired, really encouraged, and really challenged me. And that made me really glad because that was my goal. That's what I've been praying for. And in light of that, I want to just reiterate what Dave just said. Over these next 10 days, we have two important next steps that we could choose to take. So one week from today, next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. You remember at the very beginning of this series, we talked about the fact that faith is the foundation of prayer. But really, if you're a follower of Jesus, faith is kind of the foundation of everything. Like coming to a point in your life when you say, Jesus, I actually trust you. I actually trust you. And Jesus said, believe and be baptized. And, and what faith says, what trust says, is that when God gives us a direction, a commandment, if you will, he's not doing it because he has an arbitrary sense of making stuff up to wreck our fun or to amuse himself. But instead, when God asks us to take a step of obedience, he does so because he believes that step, he knows that step will take us to a place of greater freedom, greater strength, and greater victory. So I want to encourage you, if you have not yet been baptized as a believer, whether you are watching online or in person, I would ask you to take that step of faith next week. It's not about how long you've gone to church. It's not about whether you serve or whether you're in a small group. It's about nothing but this. Do you believe? If you trust him, you take that step. And I can't wait for you to do it because you're going to step into greater strength, hope, freedom, and victory. So if you haven't, text that keyword DUNK to 604-670-34. If you lived a crazy kind of life, we'll just hold you under the water a little bit longer next week and it'll all work out. Excellent. Now, 10 days from now is Ash Wednesday. It's the beginning of Lent. It's a preparation for Easter. Corinne wrote that book, Wake Up, Walk On. It's just a book of daily readings to bring us up to Easter. And whether or not you've ever done daily readings, whether you're just kind of checking out the whole Jesus thing, the whole church thing, or whether you've been going to church for years, this is a great time to just do a daily reading. Wake Up, Walk On. It's been quite a two and a half years, people. And I think for all of us, as we move towards Easter, we need to have a a moment, we need to have a sense that it's time to wake up, stand up, dust ourselves off, and walk on. And because of Easter, we can. So, week six of this six-week series called Five. I want us to become a people of prayer. Not perfect people, but people of prayer. So I talked about giving us five steps that we can take in as few as five minutes a day that we're going to review, that we're going to rejoice, we're going to uh, repent, we're going to request. And finally, today, I want to talk about the fact that we're going to reflect. Reflection. Ask ourselves, who is this God? Who, who is this God that I pray to? Who, who is this God? Not only do I pray to him, but he actually hears me. Who is this God that not only hears, but listens? Who is this God that not only listens, but cares? Who is this God that not only cares, but answers my prayer? Who is this God? And I really believe that when we take the time to reflect, we will be filled with a sense of wonder. It's like that old hymn says, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy powers throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. And when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Let your soul sing. Who is this God? He's a God of wonder. Who is this God? Well, he's the unmade maker. He's the unmade maker. He's the God of the beginning, the God of today, the God of tomorrow, the God of forever. He's the God of creation. He's the God of the shining stars and the rolling thunder. And yet he's also the God of the cross and the empty tomb. See, not only is he a God that holds the whole universe 
together. He's a God that wants to hold you together. He's a God that knows you fully, completely, and yet loves you absolutely. He's a God who's kind of come back for you one day. He's going to make every wrong right. He's going to make all things new. He's the God who says always, always, always the best is still yet to come. Who is this God? Let your soul sing. Be filled with wonder. Confession time. I'm not good at this. I struggle with wonder. I bet you do too. Every time we start to talk about the topic of wonder, there's this old quote from G.K. Chesterton that comes back to me. He says this, because children have abounding vitality. Little kids, you know? Because children have abounding vitality vitality because they are in spirit fierce and free therefore they want things repeated and unchanged they always say do it again and the grown-up person does it again until he is nearly dead for grown-up people are not strong enough to exult in monotony but perhaps God is strong enough to exult in monotony it is possible that God says every morning do it again to the sun and every evening do it again to the moon It may not be automatic necessity that makes all daisies alike. It may be that God makes every daisy separately, but has never got tired of making them. It may be that he has the eternal appetite of infancy, for we have sinned and grown old, and our father is younger than we. I read that and there's this question that comes to my mind. Have we grown old and lost our wonder? Have we grown old and lost our wonder? See, Paul wrote this in Romans 8. He says, this resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant. Greeting God with a child like, what's next, Papa? Papa? And I read that and I think to myself, have we grown grown old and lost our wonder? Because I don't always feel like that. Have we grown old and lost our wonder? C.S. Lewis says this, should always have the mind of an adult, but never, ever, ever, ever lose the heart of a child. Have you and me grown old and lost our wonder? Wonder. When I think about my wonder years, my wonder years, there's a name that always comes to my mind. And if you've been at Southside for any length at all, online or in person, you've probably heard this name before. The name is Grant King, my best buddy growing up. You're like, wow, I just really want to hear a Grant King story today. Mike, that's great. Well, tough luck, you're going to hear one anyways. Grant and I started hanging out when we were about seven, maybe eight years old. And from that day forward, like almost virtually every day of our lives till we were 19, we hung out. And it was wonderful. It was full wonder. Remember the time we were riding our bikes through our subdivision and we stumbled across this guy who was fixing arcade machines in his garage. We called him Mr. Arcade. We asked him if he needed testers, and he said yes. So for an entire summer, every night we would go to Mr. Arcade's house and play like Space Invaders, Pac-Man, and Frogger for free. And we just thought it was so amazing, and it makes me laugh now because I think like the video games that you have at home, like technologically speaking, are like a million times better than those games, but we thought it was wonderful. There was a time that we connected a water skiing tow rope to the back of a snowmobile and we would take turns towing each other with snow skis over this big jump that we built in the back of the acreage and we thought it was wonderful. Or the time that we took the snowmobiles down to the Blind Man River Valley out in the middle of nowhere. It seemed like no one had ever been there. We went into the forest, we grabbed all this dry wood, we made a fire and we sat there beside the fire and underneath a sky full of stars and I thought it was wonderful. But it wasn't just those moments, right? It's just the school bus. Riding bikes, playing catch, playing golf on the nine-hole golf course that my dad uh, put together on, in the back of our acreage. The last time Grant and I ever hung out, we were 19 years old. 
we drove his Jeep into the forest near Pine Lake, Alberta, until we couldn't drive anymore, and then we walked till we found a clearing. We pitched a tent, we lit a fire, and we sat there, and we popped popcorn in beer cans, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked. We didn't talk much about the future because by that point of our lives, we had realized, even subconsciously, that Grant's future didn't involve Mike and Mike's future didn't really involve Grant. See, for some of you who know my story a little bit, I went off the rails for years and at first when I went off the rails, Grant went off the rails with me. We were side by side going off the rails. But eventually I went so far off the rails that no one could really go with me. And so we kind of like drifted apart, still best friends. But there was a time, I'll tell you, there was a time in our lives, I guarantee you this, there was a time in our lives that we were so close that if I would look at Grant and said, Jesus saved me, because he did, you know. Jesus saved me, and I'm leaving Red Deer, and I'm going to Trinity Western University. Grant King would have said to me, when are we leaving? But not anymore. And so we sat there, and we didn't talk much about the future because we knew that the future of Grant wouldn't involve Mike and the future of Mike wouldn't involve Grant. So we talked about the past, being kids, you know, being best friends. The crazy stuff we did, getting into trouble, getting out of trouble, girls, girls we liked, girls who liked us. And we just kept talking and talking and talking and talking, popping popcorn in those stupid beer cans all night long. Grant had this portable stereo with him, and at first we just kept switching cassette tapes. But eventually, for the last several hours, we just left the same tape in. It just kept flipping and playing, playing, kind of like our soundtrack, U2, Joshua Tree, over and over and over again. And when I look back in the night, it's funny, because we never said the words, but all the words that we spoke, we never said these words, but all the words that we spoke really just said this. Thank you. I love you. And the sun came up and we ignored it at first. But eventually Grant looked up, said, well, I guess we didn't need the tent. And we packed up and we went home. It's funny, when I look back at that night, because if you ask me the dividing line between Mike Manis, the kid, and Mike Manis, the adult, it's that night. And don't get me wrong, Like, I have so much to be thankful for in my life right now. So many blessings that I truly, truly am grateful for. I wouldn't trade them for the world. But if you ask me, what was the moment? What was the moment that you might just have lost your wonder? I'd probably say that night. Popping popcorn in beer cans near Pine Lake, Alberta. And I'm really grateful. I wouldn't trade what I have for the world. But I've been thinking about that question a little bit lately for you. I've been thinking about that question a little bit lately for me. Have we grown old and lost our wonder? Because there's something I've been saying to you from the very beginning of this series, and I want to say it again. You don't have a soul. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. You have a mind. Your body and your mind are aging. Your soul is not. You are not grown too old for wonder. So here's what I think we do. I think we take stock of everything we have and we're absolutely grateful. And, and we recapture the wonder. Now I'm not some sort of an expert standing up here lecturing you, but I got some ideas and maybe we could try it together. So step one, If we're gonna recapture the wonder, when I look back at my wonder years, one thing I think we need to do, make a friend. Make some friends. It's funny how easy it was to make friends when we were kids. It gets so much harder when when you're an adult, don't you think so? Why is that? I kind of thought of three A's that I think make friendship harder as an adult. Three A's. The first is acceleration. Acceleration. We are shockingly busy. Ask someone how they're doing, they'll go, oh, crazy busy. Crazy. Insanely busy. Think about what you just said. You're crazy 
and you're insane. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So here's what you should do. Stop. Stop it. Only you can stop it. Only you can make that decision. Look, go ahead. Like, excel. I want you to. Do well in life. But understand this, please. Life is lived in the margins. And for too many of us, we're living without any. Love happens in the margins. Friendships are built in the margins. Wonder, wonder, wonder is found where? In the margins. So make a decision. Only you can make it. Slow down. Slow down. Number one, acceleration makes it tough. Number two, anxiety. Kind of scared because by the age that you and me are at, relatively young still, obviously, but I mean, we've lived a couple years, you know? We've been hurt, right? And so there's something about you. When you're seven, eight years old, what do you have to lose? And then all of a sudden you get a little older and now you know what you have to lose. But I want you to think about something because I really believe it's true. I think the risk of isolation is much, much greater than the risk of vulnerability. I think the cost of isolation is much, much, much greater than the cost of vulnerability. I think it's tough to make friends because of acceleration, anxiety, and anger. 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 2022, the year of anger. Anger. Seven, eight years old. First time Grant and I ever hung out, we shot hoops played basketball. You know what we didn't do? I didn't say, hey, Grant, want to shoot hoops? He said, yep. Yeah. And I went like this. I said, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before I give you the ball, before I give you the ball, Grant, hey, before I give you this basketball, before I can decide whether I'm going to shoot hoops with you, one question. Just one question. I know you're only seven, but if you could have voted, <laughs> who would you have voted for? Because I ain't shooting hoops with somebody who doesn't vote like I vote. And Grant didn't say, whoa, 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 before you give me that ball, hey, hey, before you give me that ball, I just need to know one thing. Do you got a big flag in the back of your pickup truck? Because <laughs> if you don't, I can't shoot hoops with you. Or if you do, I can't shoot hoops with you. Weird, right? Man, we're angry. We're looking for all kind of reason to divide why are we so angry? I think part of it is those first two. Acceleration. We're shockingly busy. i got to save time here. I don't have time to get to know you. I don't have time to understand you. I'm going to make this quick. I'm going to divide the world into two. Good, bad. Dumb, smart. Evil, virtuous. Makes it a lot quicker, doesn't it? I didn't have to, have to take the time to get to know you. And I'm a little bit scared because I think, well, I don't know, man. Like, what if I lose this argument? I want to tell you, I'm pretty proud of our church, by the way. Southside online, Southside in person. John Wooden said years and years and years ago, he said this, we should be able to disagree without being disagreeable, don't you think? I'm really proud of this church because here's the thing. I know that not everybody in here, not everybody online sees every issue the exact same way. But somewhere along the line, we made a decision that we're going to stop looking for reasons to divide and start looking for reasons to pull together. Like we're family, right? We're family, right? Like, like our father. Who is he again? Oh, he's, he's the unmade maker. He's the unmade maker. He's the God of the beginning, the God of today, the God of tomorrow, the God of forever. He's the God of creation. He's the God of the shining stars and the rolling thunder. But he's also the God of the cross and the empty tomb. See, he holds the whole universe together, but he also wants to hold you together too. He knows you absolutely fully and completely, and he loves you totally. And he's coming back one day, and he's going to make every wrong right. He's going to make all old things new. And he's the God of the best is always yet to come. And he gives us the ability to love. Because this would be weird, right? In 2022, wouldn't this be weird? Because the world's watching. The world's watching. The world's watching. And they're looking for an alternative. And this is what the world doesn't need in 2022. 
You know what the world doesn't need in 2022? I don't know why I just like saying 2022. It's just kind of a weird thing. It rolls off my tongue. You know what the world doesn't need? They don't need a group of people who live exactly as accelerated, exactly as anxious, and exactly as angry as everybody else. But you know, there's one thing that makes them completely unique and completely different. You know what it is? Now listen to this. It's amazing. They're so different in one way. They go to a building for an hour a week, they listen to some tunes, and they hear a motivational talk. Whoa. You know what the world's looking for? What if, what if, what if, what if this God of love, the unmade maker, the God of creation, the God of redemption, the God of salvation, what if that God gave us the ability to love each other well? And realize once and for all that there is more that pulls us together than should ever ever tear us apart. You want to restore your wonder in 2022? Make a friend. Make some friends. We get real intentional about this at Southside, by the way. We got small groups. No matter your opinion on the Edmonton Oilers, you are still welcome at every single small group we have, whether you're online or in person. If you are not in a group, my goal is that every single person that calls Southside Church home, whether you're online or in person, would be in a small group. So if you're not and you're willing to be a friend, you're willing to make some friends, please text the keyword group to that number, 604-670-3040. So number one, make a friend, make some friends. Number two, be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Like Grant King and Mike Manis at Mr. Arcades. Sure, Frogger sucks when we look back at it now, but at the time we're like, this is the greatest thing ever. Be like that. Three enemies of gratitude are jealousy, familiarity, and entitlement. So just decide you're not going to let those things steal your gratitude. Jealousy is just basic, is, is based on something called the scarcity mentality. Jealousy says there's only an, a certain amount of good stuff to go around. So if you, if you have success, it means less for me. But we, have the, we believe in the God of more than enough. So we can celebrate instead of being jealous. We can celebrate instead of, jealous, of being jealous. Familiarity breeds contempt, they say, but it doesn't have to. You can still be delighted. You can still be delighted, you know? You know the 87K car you're driving? It still runs. Isn't that amazing? Be delighted. You know, she married you 32 years ago. You should still be shocked. You should still be delighted that she's still with you. It's amazing. (laughs) And instead of entitlement, you should still be surprised. Me? Are you serious? Me? I get a roof over my head? Seriously? Food on my table? Friends to do life with? No. Yeah. Yeah. Make a friend. Be grateful. Third, try stuff. Try stuff. Attach a water skiing rope to the back of your snowmobile. Tear around. It's fun. Try stuff. Write a book. Write a song. Write a poem. Learn an instrument. Take a class. Get your degree. Get your master's. Get your PhD. Build a treehouse. If you want, pop popcorn in a beer can. It's slow going, but if you want to, have at her. I remember when Grant and I were towing each other around on the stupid snowmobile tow rope. You know what I didn't do? This is going to seem kind of weird, but you know what I didn't do? I didn't go to school the next day and say, hey guys, can can, can I ask you a question? Can, can, can I talk to you guys for a second? I'll gather and gather and I just need to know something. Hey, like Grant and I last night, we were doing this thing. We put the water skiing rope to the back of the snowmobile. We tore each other. We, 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 we towed each other around. We went over a jump. I just need to know something. Hey, can I just ask you one quick question? Is that cool? Is that, was, was that good? Do you, do you like that? Oh, you don't. Okay, Grant, we're not doing it anymore. The guys don't like it. You're like, that's so weird. Yeah, and you live your life that way. So what would you try if it didn't matter what they thought? What would you try? Would you write a book? Would you write a song? Would you learn an instrument? What would you do? What would you try? It's funny, sitting around that campfire near Pine Lake, Alberta, all those years ago, up until that point in my life, I would say that I did not maximize my potential. I did not try. At school, I did not try at work. 
did not maximize my potential. But, why do I keep saying potential? I can just say potential, okay? Potential, okay. So, <laughs> potential. Okay, anyways, after 19 years old, man, I started to try. Oh, did I try. And Jesus had saved me, and I read in Colossians 3, 17, whatever you do, whether a word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the Father through him. So I tried it stuff. I went to university, and I tried, and I started getting good marks, and I was flabbergasted. Huh. I was like, whoa, man, this is crazy. And it was just this great, delightful surprise, and it was so good and so right, and then the months wore on and the years wore on, and I kept having success, and you know what ended up happening to me? I began to validate myself through success. And all of a sudden, it wasn't a delightful surprise anymore. Oh, you better not fail. Can you relate at all? So because I would suggest that for some of us, we don't try stuff because we're desperately afraid that if we try, we might fail. And I would say, hey, 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 fail more. Fail more. What would you be willing to try if you did not fear failure? Next one, look back. Look back. Sit around that campfire, Grant and I kept looking back, and even as I look back at us looking back, it makes me kind of sad. It makes me kind of sad that that's the last time we really ever hung out. But I don't think it has to. Like, I think when we look back, we, kind of have, we sometimes have this fatalistic mentality that says, um, that's over forever. But that's not true. See, who is this God? Well, he's the God of the beginning, Right? He's the God of today, tomorrow, but he's also the God of forever, and he's coming back one day. And he's going to restore all things. And he's going to make all things new. And he's going to make all wrong right. So here's what I'm saying. Those best moments of friendship that you've ever experienced, those best moments of adventure, those best moments of joy, that's just the beginning of an inkling of the taste of what is to come. So when we look back, it's not, oh, this is over forever. No, no, it's over for now. The best of the best moments, that's over for now. And because of this God we pray to, the best is still always yet to come. So when we look back, that should fuel our enthusiasm for what is yet to come. And finally, and most importantly, look up. Look up. Sitting in the Blind Man River Valley around that fire underneath a sky full of stars, and you look up, and you're reminded of the fact that, well, Psalm 19 says it this way, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. So I think you should get outside and look up. Say, so, well, I'm not really much of an outdoors person, Mike. Okay, okay, I get it. I think you should get outside and look up. Kind of like it inside, Mike. Yeah, I understand. I think you should get outside and look up. I think you should. I, I, I think it'll help restore your wonder. July of 2020. July of 2020. Do you remember July of 2020? If you do, I would just say to you, I was feeling probably a little bit like you were feeling in July of 2020. I was rat told. I was struggling a bit in July of 2020. It was about six months into the pandemic and the quarantines and the preaching to a camera instead of people and all of that stuff. And it felt like we had lost so much and we were never going to get it back. And I just was looking only at what I had lost and what was right in front of me. And I was driving around Chilliwack all by myself in my car and I was having a pity party and I was struggling. And I remember I took a turn onto the overpass and I headed east on the Trans-Canada Highway. For those of you who aren't from around here, we live in the most beautiful place on the planet. And if you drive about 40 minutes east, you're in the Rocky Mountains. And I drove up as high as I could get up on the Coquihalla Summit and I got out of my car and I just walked around all by myself. 
And I looked up at a sky full of stars. And it's shocking, right? Because the closest star is about four and a half light years away, which means that the light that's hitting my eyes left that star four and a half years ago. I don't know why, but I just find that completely amazing. And some of the stars that I see in the night sky from the top of the Coquihalla, they're thousands of light years away. And I think to myself, man, how can you look at creation without being drawn back to Creator? And I asked myself again in July of 2020, as I stood at the top of the Coquihalla all by myself, a little scared that a bear might attack me, but that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> I asked myself, who is this God? Well, he's the unmade maker. He's the God of the beginning, the God of today, the God of tomorrow, and the God of forever. He's the God of creation. He's the God of the shining stars and the rolling thunder. But he's also the God of the cross and the empty tomb. He's a God who knows you absolutely, fully, and completely, and yet loves you infinitely and unconditionally. And he's a God that's coming again one day. He's going to make all things new. He's going to make all wrongs right. He's a God that says always, always, always the best is yet to come. Who is this God? See, I think when we reflect on that, our soul sings. Our soul sings. And we are filled again with wonder. Why don't you close your eyes and bow your heads as we close if you feel comfortable doing so. Whether you're online or in person. I just want to take a moment of personal reflection. Who is this God? He's the unmade maker. He's the God of creation, the God of redemption, the God of forever. And he loves you fully and completely. No matter who you are or where you've been or what you have done, you are so loved. God's son Jesus stepped into human history. He died on a cross. And he rose again, and he did that so that you could move past your past once and for all to put down your regret and your shame and your guilt and even your scars and move forward. Gives you strength for today, hope for tomorrow, and the promise of eternity where the best will always, always, always be yet to come. Have you met him? Do you know him? I want to give you the chance, whether you're online or in person right now, with heads bowed and all eyes closed, if you don't mind right now, if today is the day that you want to accept that free gift that Jesus purchased for you through his death and resurrection, forgiveness and salvation, why don't you raise your hand up nice and high right now so I can pray for you. That's awesome. 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 Whether you're online or in person right now, you can put your hands down. I'm going to pray out loud and you can just pray silently along with me. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you came to rescue me when you died on that cross. And so I ask you today to be my savior. I pray that you would forgive my sins. And thank you that you rose again. So I pray that you would be my Lord, that you would give me the strength to change, to live, to find freedom and victory in my life. Today, tomorrow, and forever. And God, for all of us, whether we've been going to church our whole lives, I pray for all of us in 2022. God, please, please, please restore our sense of wonder that regularly in our lives we will just be stopped in our tracks with this question, who is this God? And we know it's you and we're unbelievably awestruck. We love you. We thank you. In your name, amen. Let's celebrate, church. <laughs> Next week is Baptism Sunday. Man, even if you've got to hold the under for two minutes, this is your time. This is your moment. If you haven't been baptized yet, sign up. I love you guys. We'll see you next week.
Right. I didn't need from her so 